Hi, I'm Michael Ingui from Back Stingui Architects, a firm in New York City. We do a lot of different types of projects, residential, some commercial. We do a lot of townhouse work right now, and a lot of those townhouses are passive houses. I'll describe a passive house and why they fit our project profile. They are houses that are really well sealed. So typically I'll walk through a house with clients and I say, well, do you, if you want your house sealed from most bugs and dust, we could do a passive house. And if you want to have your house with filtered fresh air, you, we can do a passive house. Most people didn't know you could have either one of those things, especially in a house in New York City, filtered from most bugs and dust and allergens. Typically people are sold right there. But then we mentioned things like Passive House also uses high performance windows. And those high performance windows block almost all the street noise. So now I'm getting a healthy, serene indoor air environment. Because I created this sealed environment, it needs very little insulation to get myself to a place where I need almost no heat. I'm, I'm heating only seven days, 10 days, 14 days out of the whole winter. I don't need a boiler. I don't need a boiler flu. I don't need radiators. So we can all debate where we like to get our fuel from, but what if I don't need it? And that's true resilience, building a better box. And then from there, you get to the environmental benefits. I'm really helping to save the environment by simply building a better house. And as you see when we walk inside, there's nothing really crazy about this. It's just better building. It's better building materials that most of our contractors love to do once they learn how to do it. And all of our clients want as soon as we describe what it is. It shows that anybody could do this and it's gonna be a wonderful project. I'm looking forward to showing it to you. We were pretty excited to work on this carriage house. It's had a lot of lives. When you really look closely at the facade um, behind this wonderful green wall is where the garage door will be. But the garage door was once a longer garage door and we're, we're restoring that. We also restored the arched opening and a lot of the existing brick it was already beautiful. Uh, so what's nice about this house is a lot of the performance related items are all on the inside. Um, you only have a few things that you can see from the outside, such as the high performance windows. I would love to approach this from a designer's perspective and give you a good sense of what's happening there and what we're thinking about. But for the super technical stuff, I'd like to introduce you to Kevin Brennan of Brennan Brennan Insulation and Air Tightness. Thanks, Mike. Great privilege to work on a project with you like this. Take a hundred year old building and make it uh, future proof for tomorrow to get these houses to perform for the, for the next 150 years. Because we're gonna, Mike's team is gonna put in a lot of beautiful finishes and the, the walls and the building itself will be just as pretty inside, meaning the air tightness and the insulation so that it lasts for a very long time. We're walking into the first floor. This is the main floor right from the street. Uh, we're walking past the closet a powder room, past a sculptural stair that goes all the way to the top, bringing natural light down. We've taken down a lot of walls here. This used to be car parking. Now it, you come into a great room that includes a kitchen. You can see the mock-up of the hood. Um, dining in this really fantastic nook that's glass filled. And um, living area, which has these wonderful doors that, that open up to this yard. They're all protected now because it's still a construction site. Um, we were able to do lots of fun things here. We were able to keep the existing joists um, exposed. You can kind of see the trick of how they do that and where they partially uh, recess the sheetrock so we can still get some insulation and some sound deadening through there. We're sprinklering the house, which also helps. This contractor is incredibly smart. They protected the joists first. I know this seems like a small thing, but as a designer, we wanted the joists the way they were. Uh, we didn't want them painted or sanded. <clears throat> so they protect it. This allows them to um, sheetrock it and plaster it and do whatever they want. They take the plastic off and I still have my beautiful joists the way they were when we first found them. So what's great about the Nook is it starts to show a few different things. One, I mean, it's being, it has a really great refrigerator, but, uh, but when the refrigerator is not here, this is going to be a banquette. Um, it's, it's got windows that surround it and you will not feel cold. There is no heating here. There's no heating element behind me. These windows perform so well 
that they do not let the cold through. Um, it's one of the wonderful things about Passive House and really designing them correctly. I don't have a lot of insulation. These are not incredibly thick walls. They're just well built. It's just better building. You can start to see how they actually do that when you look at, at, at this. And maybe Kevin, you could tell us just a little bit more about just how this is done and, 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 and what this white material is, is, is because this is pretty cool. Yeah, Mike, so th this is the vapor intelligent membrane called Intello. Uh, it's our primary air barrier. It seals the, the building on the front wall and the ceilings. So it's continuous and terminated at the party walls as well. So it wraps the entire surface. It's detailed properly. You have a few penetrations up at the top at the ceiling. You have a blown in dense pack cellulose. That's what that machine's for and the cellulose on the ground. And uh, that's fully filled. It's about 10 inches of perfectly insulated space. I'm a slight, slight more beneficial than say bat insulation that has a little bit of human error into it so the machine does it perfectly and then this gray piece of material at the top here is a piece of foam board that isolates the i-beam from the moment frame so it uh, reduces the thermal bridge of this kind of assembly so the secret sauce of passive house is make it airtight super insulate it and isolate those thermal bridges what's great about the space that we're in is that the cellar space uh wasn't here it was all dirt. Um, we couldn't build up, so we built down. We're in a landmark district. You can't add to the top, so very often we'll add below. We were in a great place here because both of the walls for the neighboring homes already went down, so we didn't have to do a lot of heavy structural work on the sides. I had to do a little bit in the front and back, but it creates this incredible space. It can be used for recreational purposes, den, home gym, lots of things. What we also do is we're very often creating a sculptural stair with a skylight above, which brings natural light down. This particular stair was built in one piece uh, with, from Cottingham, and all the rails, the entire stair was uh, built in place in their shop and then delivered um, on site. It made for uh, really fast, easy uh, installation, but it also let us do some fun details that we wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. But just coming into the space, it's huge. It's the whole width of the house. It's the whole depth of the house. And just coming back into the high performance nature of the house, I have no ductwork. I have no real soffits. I have no uh, radiators. I, I, I don't have in-floor heating. I don't need any of that. It has a, a plastic liner, kind of like a pool liner, that comes all the way up the side walls. It's also insulated below that. So the, um, the cold from the dirt as well as the moisture from the dirt doesn't find its way into the space. You can actually see a piece of that um, right in this space with, with, the, with the mechanical room is where it's still open. This yellow wrap coming through. You can also start to see there's very few mechanicals in this space. We don't need radiators. We don't need a boiler because we barely need to heat. Once you seal the house, you barely need any heat. Maybe talk to us a little bit about how you go from the underside of the dirt all the way up the wall. The principle is, is that if you're putting in an air barrier, a vapor barrier, just make sure that it's fully sealed and terminated. So because of the moisture problems in, in these subgrade areas, we like to use the vapor barrier all the way up the wall to prevent any kind of like future flooding or anything coming in. And then we tape and seal all the seams of the vapor barrier. And then once it connects to the above grade walls, then we'll go to the blue membrane, which is the adhero. And that's our air barrier. So we go from the, the vapor barrier that goes fresh under the slab onto the wall. Then it transitions over the top of this brick shelf and then goes to the uh, peel and stick on the wall. And this is our, part, our air barrier on the partition wall between the neighbors. And then in that little mechanical room, this room is separated with the two inches of poly iso with a foil face here. So this room is isolated from the rest of the, of the, of the building, the house. And so this room is technically, you know, outside the condition space. There's a sump pump and a domestic hot water heater. And this building's kind of unique in that there's a garage above us. It's a healthy, healthy concept of totally sealing a garage. So uh, if you did have a, a, a car start in the garage, the carbon monoxide wouldn't come inside. But I think these owners are gonna go all electric with the Tesla, so uh, no carbon monoxide there anyway. So coming up to the second floor, we have basically a bedroom floor where you've got the primary bedroom behind me. Again, you've got that sculptural stair that goes around. It's funny, you really can't tell with all the protection, but uh, this is what makes a good contractor from a bad contractor. These are 
already finished stairs, fully protected. Um, you can't even tell they're finished. So this is gonna get a sliding um, steel and glass door that separates this um, office with this really cool kind of arch top window. Um, again, it's a passive house window. It's a little thicker, it's quiet. You can't hear anything outside that window. It's one of the other really monstrous positives. Again, we ask our clients, do you want a house that has less street noise in your house? Do you want a serene indoor environment? And they're like, yeah, I want that. Uh, who doesn't want that? I, I'll take the loud house. Um, so um, what's nice about it is you get the quiet amenity, but you also get the performance. This is made by a company called Zola, a great company. And it looks like a typical double hung window, which Landmarks loves, but it's actually a tilt turn, which means this window tilts or turns. Um, really wonderful product. We're walking past the bedroom here and we're walking into what will be a laundry room. I'm gonna have my washer, my dryer. I'll have a, some nice cabinets that, that, that cover the mechanical, because although I might love to see the mechanical, not everybody does. This is what I said was an ERV, or an energy recovery ventilator. So why do you call it that versus just a fresh air system? Because fresh air system just dumps all the air I had in the house that's conditioned and brings in new air in from outside. Well, imagine doing that when the air is like 20 degrees outside. Um, you want the air from the inside and the air from the outside to pass by each other, but still be filtered. So you're bringing in relatively conditioned air and that's what it does. The way these work is they constantly supply all of the living spaces with filtered fresh air and they constantly exhaust from bathrooms and kitchens and larger rooms. So you're constantly getting these filtered fresh air changes, creating these really healthy houses. And when you need to have more exhaust, like when you're using a bathroom or a kitchen, you press boost and it goes into boost mode and you get even more filtered fresh air. Uh, when you do have exhaust, again, you have to choose where you're getting that air from. Exhaust leaves, the air is gonna come through. This little unit right here that's sitting on the floor, it doesn't take up a lot of space, works really well. And this is a makeup air unit. Um, again, easy to install if you're thinking about it from the beginning. My hood goes on, this goes on. Air goes out, air comes in. It's not coming through little crevices that I don't want it to come through. You know, it sounds really highly technical. It's two pieces of equipment. It's, it's kind of easy. And once you know to do it, um, you always do it because you realize what you're missing when you don't. One of the difficulties of creating sealed homes is, is how do you do that? with the windows where it meets the wall. And windows are, are that, the most technical spot. So maybe you can kind of describe that to us, Kevin. All right, so we have a triple pane tilt and turn window in the rear of this uh, project. Uh, the window's installed. The, uh, this is a plywood buck that goes into the rough opening of the window, which has been fully flashed and sealed for water. Then the, uh, the window gets placed and there's a nice little half inch space here around the window that we're gonna fill with some polyurethane foam. Then we'll cut that straight and then the tape will be applied to the plywood buck that goes around and all the brackets will be sealed as well. So this window will, is sealed from the outside for water and it's sealed on the inside for air tightness. And we're using the uh, window tape because it just gives us a little more uh, exact performance on air tightness. If it looks perfect, it is perfect. And then as you come across the wall here, you have uh, a dense pack cellulose wall. So this wall has been insulated with dense pack cellulose. I can show you what the cellulose looks like. So the wall has been fully filled with dense pack cellulose that's all the way in there. It's recycled newspaper that's been made with uh, a little bit of borate for a rodent repellent and fire retardant. Um, uh, so it'll only smolder. But it, uh, it's a nice product to use in these types of walls because they're odd shapes, you know, metal C joists, they're furred off the wall. It would be very difficult to put bat insulation in here perfectly, but with the, the pneumatic machine, we're able to dense pack this as close to perfect as we can. And the other nice part of it is, is that when it's dense packed in there, it also stops the movement of air and it seals up the wall a little better. From a designer's perspective, in the same place that Kevin was just talking about, I have all of my plumbing for the sink in the outside wall, something I would never do because this would always freeze. 
um, and I know it would freeze, so I would never do it. But in a passive house, I could do it because I've got my four inches, of in four inches of insulation. It's not a monstrously thick wall like everybody thinks it might be. And then I have this service cavity that Kevin's talked about. And what's cool about the service cavity is I could do things like run plumbing and have a sink where I couldn't do it. And in a bathroom like this, it, it opens up the possibilities. It's really wonderful. So as I come up this sculptural stair, I come pretty close to this temporary platform, um, really well protected. What would be above me is this really incredible skylight. It is a triple pane skylight with a really tall curb. It lets us insulate all around it, but it also lets us do big glass, which is really helpful as a designer. You can kind of see what'll happen is this will curve around and then curve back up you can start to see some of that intelligent membrane and how that's working here. Sprinkle ahead will be in there. This will be nice, clean sheetrock, but you can see some of Kevin's handiwork there. I've got all these great big windows here. Again, I, I don't have a radiator in my way. I don't have ductwork in my way. I've got one air conditioning grill for this whole space, and this will wind up becoming kind of the owner's uh, home office, which is great. So when you're on the roof deck, the first thing you notice, well, there's a lot of construction going on, but there's really very little mechanical here. I've got some of my duct work for my fresh air units that I'll be covered with a planter, but unlike a lot of the other buildings around me with all the air conditioning around them, I don't have any mechanicals except for this single unit that you can see next to me. This single unit is going to provide all the cooling and just enough heating for me. This happens to be made by Mitsubishi, a wonderful company to work with on the Passive House world. They've been on the forefront from the beginning. I'm on a roof deck and the actual roof is about seven inches below me that lets all this drain. That allows me to have this really smooth indoor outdoor uh, feel. And maybe Kevin, you could talk to us a little bit more about what we're looking from the bottom all the way up. Yeah, so from the bottom up, we have uh, the Suprema roofing membrane. This is insulation that's cut and angled to be uh, kick out flashing, kind of like a through wall flashing. And then we come up onto this Suprema uh, peel and stick. It's a vapor open air barrier system. And then that comes up the wall and goes into the rough opening and that has the liquid flashing. And then at the, you can see where the window's installed, we have some uh, Baccarat and caulk sealants inside the window here. So the window is completely sealed from the outside for wind, water, and, uh, and, and, and air tightness point of view. Uh, the liquid flashing at the top is uh, very helpful in these, uh, these shapes. It makes it a lot easier to make sure they're sealed with the liquid membrane. So as I walk out the doors, the first thing you notice, well, A, is how thick the door is. You don't really notice it. I know it's protected and you can't really see it. You don't really notice it. They look pretty thin this way, but they're really thick this way and they have a lot of sealant. That creates a really tight seal and is one of the reasons why these doors perform almost as well as a wall. Again, these are made by Zola. As a designer, they're also really tall. So I get to do tall doors that are really slender, hard to find, nice big opening. But to talk a little bit more about the space we're in, this was all interior. So very similar to the cellar space where that didn't exist, this didn't exist either. So we've got the rear wall that was once here that we've, that we've repaired, but you can see the outline of the roof behind me. And the roof was, was there, we still kept the wall, and we wanted a rear yard in the space, so we took this all down, created this space, this is where the banquette will be, to create kind of an indoor-outdoor experience and a rear yard where you wouldn't have had it otherwise. Whenever you do this, and when you're in such a small space, got to be careful with how you do it. There are two drains here in case of a real major rain event. You've got a lot of really great waterproofing that goes on both below and above and you pay a lot of attention to it. Anytime you have a small enclosed space like this with all the water events we're getting it's important so they've been really good about it and Kevin it would be great if you could talk to us just a little bit more about what we're looking at here because just like everywhere else in the house just having it sealed before we put the beautiful finishes on it that I care more about, um, it's great to have it actually perform the way it's got to. They started shingle fashion below grade. So they have a, a peel and stick that goes below grade all the way below down here, about three, four feet. That comes up the wall and then you can see the black membrane turns over and then goes into, into, into the underside of the wall. And then we transition to the peel and stick from Suprema. 
and then all the details are hit with liquid flashing that uh, makes sealing the rough opening very friendly to the installer like myself and that's wrapped all the way around you can see a nice example of the liquid flashing here that it's a, a nice heavy duty waterproofing that goes into the rough opening and then the windows themselves are then once again sealed with uh, back rod and sealant and uh, it comes all the way around so it's it's really uh, it's a pretty robust system to protect from the water and as you go up to the top everything's done shingle fashion from the bottom up all the way to the underside of this little roof membrane and then that copper flashing's there that's going to last for a pretty long time we're lucky enough to have someone like kevin who's got the air sealing down we've got a great passive house consultant on this building type and to fair construction they've been involved from the beginning it's a team sport as kevin likes to say and it's the little things they do that make a very big difference. And this is not a passive house thing. This is just a better building thing. You saw inside, I was talking next to some of these dehumidifiers that are already going. I mean, this, this project is not anywhere near finished. You can start to see the exhaust vent for the air conditioner. You can see the drain. This is really important. And they had four of them running in this house. They do it because the materials that are in this house we're already being air conditioned. We're keeping the humidity down. A lot of times everybody's like, well, why is my house moving so much? And why do I see cracks after the house is open? I mean, it happens in every new construction project. There's not much we can do about it. There's moisture in all this material, but having a contractor that takes the care to run air conditioning, both makes their workers a lot happier, but it also keeps the building materials with the right moisture amount. Small thing, I know it's highly technical, but when I get into the really beautiful finishes that I'm gonna to love to see, at least I know they're not gonna move. Coming back to the firm, we're about 20, 24 people right now. We have an interior design company um, within the office, front office staff, all of our architects are designers. They're also, um, uh, most of them are also certified passive house designers because they've learned about it. Um, but we're really a design firm and we're a good example in the fact that you don't have to be an environmental expert to do it. We work with great people who can help us do it. So as a design firm, anyone could do it. And again, when most clients know it exists, they want it.